Assess every child for fever whose mother gives a history of fever during this illness or who feels hot or who has a temperature of 37.5 or higher. Ask, does the child have fever? It is important to make sure that the mother understands what fever is. Use a local term for fever or ask the mother whether the child's body has felt hot to her. A child may not be suffering from fever at the time when it is brought before you. However, it is important to know if the child has had fever with this illness. Fever is assessed because fever in a sick child can be a sign of serious illness, such as malaria or measles. If you do not have a thermometer, feel for fever. Feel the child's stomach or under the child's arm and determine if it feels hot. Assessing a child for signs related to fever is a two-step process. The child is first assessed for signs of malaria and for measles. And then, if measles is present, for signs indicating complications of measles. First decide the malaria risk. Is there a high or low risk of malaria? Then ask, For how long? If the fever has been present for more than seven days, ask, Has fever been present every day? Ask, Has the child had measles in the last three months? Next, Look or feel for stiff neck. It's important to assess a child with fever for stiff neck because the child may have meningitis. First, watch to see if the child bends his neck while looking around. If he does this spontaneously, he does not have a stiff neck. If he does not bend his neck when looking around, encourage the child to bend his neck by drawing his attention to his toes. This is generally more effective than trying to bend the neck with your hand, since many children will automatically respond by tightening their neck muscles. If the child can look down, almost touching his chin to his chest, there is no stiff neck. If you are not successful in getting the child to bend its neck, you should slowly, gently, put your hand behind the child's head and try to bend the neck. The neck should move easily. Next, look for a runny nose. A runny nose in a child with a fever may indicate a cold. In a low malaria risk setting, observing whether a child has a runny nose helps to distinguish whether the fever is due to malaria or a cold. Look to see if there are signs suggesting measles. Look for a generalized rash. In measles, a red rash begins behind the ears and on the neck. It then becomes generalized. That is, the rash spreads to the face and body. Then the arms and legs. A generalized rash like measles covers the whole body. It should not be confused with a rash like scabies which is usually found on the arms and stomach. Nor does measles appear just as a rash only on the face or on the scalp. A child with measles will also have one or more of these three signs. A cough, 
a runny nose, or red eyes. If the child has measles, move on to the second part of the fever assessment. When a child has the signs of measles, it is important to continue assessing the child for signs of eye or mouth complications. Look for mouth ulcers. Are they deep and extensive? Look inside the mouth for mouth ulcers. This child doesn't have mouth ulcers. But this child does. These are painful open sores on the inside of the mouth, lips and tongue. They may be red or have a white coating on them. Mouth ulcers make it difficult for the child to drink or eat. Next, Look for pus draining from the eye. This child has pus. Measles can be complicated by an infection of the conjunctiva or white part of the eye. This can be identified by the pus which collects in the eye. Look for pus on the conjunctiva or eyelids or draining from the eye. Next, look carefully for clouding of the cornea. The normal cornea is bright and transparent. Through it, the iris and the round pupil at its middle can be seen. A normal cornea allows you to see the color of the iris clearly. The pupil is black. Measles can cause a white spot or clouding to appear in this part of the eye. The clouding may occur in only one or both eyes. When exposed to light, the condition may cause irritation and pain and the child keeps the eyes tightly shut. Corneal clouding can progress to bad ulceration of the cornea like this, which can result in blindness. That completes the assessment process for fever.